Hey folks, uh, Mr. Mathblog here. This lesson is uh, Area of Regular Polygons. This is a geometry lesson, so if you go to MrMathBlog.com, you'll find all your math lesson's no matter what math class you're in. It's uh, I got it all there anyway. So um, and at the top you'll pick your class. This is a geometry class, so pick geometry and look down, scroll down to chapter 11. All right. So here we go. My students have board problems. So this is board problem 73. An isosceles triangle has uh, lengths 20 inches, 26 inches, and 26 inches. Find the length of the altitude to the base. Okay, so draw a picture. There's our 26, 26, and 20. And so we're looking for that altitude right there. And since it's an isosceles triangle, we've been talking about this, the altitude bisects that base. So that base was 20, so it's 10 and 10. All right, so now we have a right triangle. We can do the Pythagorean theorem. So we can do 10 squared plus h squared equals 26 squared, or we can recognize this is a p-triple. It's a 5, 12, 13 p-triple. This is 5 times 2. This is 13 times 2. So if we multiply 12 times 2, we get 24. So that altitude right there is 24. So uh, make sure you answer the question. It's going to be 24 inches, okay? All right, p-triples pop up a lot, you guys, so you'll see them from now on until, uh, for the rest of your math. Uh, if you guys are taking the SAT, you'll see them all over the SAT. They love them. They're addicted to them. Anyway, uh, look up p-triples. I did a lesson on p-triples, too. So, so uh, uh, area of regular polygon. So let's do some definitions here. Regular polygon, remember, regular polygon is both equilateral and equiangular. So like a square is regular because all sides are equal and all the angles are 90. They're the same angles. An octagon, like a stop sign, that's an equilateral octagon. Those are uh, regular polygons, okay? So here we have a regular hexagon that's inscribed in this circle right here, okay? So the center of this polygon right here is going to be, and the radius of this polygon is the same as the center of the circle and the center and the radius of the circle. So as long as your your um, regular polygon is inscribed in a circle, then the centers are the same, and so are the radii, okay? All right, and then the apothem, you guys, is this, it's like the altitude of that uh, that we did in the board problem, the altitude of the isosceles triangle. So if, imagine if I drew this radius right here. This radius, we will in a second. This radius is congruent to this radius, so we'll make a, an isosceles triangle, and so this would be the altitude. And it bisects this base, so this side equals this side right here, okay? All right, and so that's called the, the apothem, or apothem, or some teachers call them, I don't know, I, I call it apothem. Some teachers say a potum, I don't know. Anyway, so that, okay? All right, and so the central angle of a regular polygon is formed by two consecutive radii. So this red guy is a central angle right here. So this uh, angle MPN is called a central angle because it's formed by the two consecutive radius uh, radii right there. And to find the measure of that, we just take, okay, imagine if I went all the way, watch my cursor, 360 okay so when you do all the way around it's 360 and so how many central angles there are are the same as the number of sides so we take 360 and divide it by the number of sides and we'll find out what this central angle is okay so here's a hexagon at six sides so 360 divided by six this is a 60 degree angle this red guy is a 60 degree angle right there okay and this apothem right here bisects that so this little dude right here is 30 and that little dude's 30 so check it out 30 60 90 Okay, we'll talk more about that in a second. All right, so here we have in the diagram a regular pentagon inscribed in circle F. Okay, find each measure. Okay, so the measure of angle AFB. So here's AFB. So that's the central angle right there. So we just take 360 and divide it by 5, and so that angle has measure of 72, 72 degrees. All right, so find the measure of angle AFG. Okay, so this apothem bisects that 72, so we take 72 and take half of that, and we find out this little angle right here is 36. I wish I wrote 36 right there, because that's going to help us answer this one right here, GAF. GAF, remember that's 36 right there, 
that's 90 right there so a triangle right here is 180 so we just do a little subtraction from 180 and we find out that uh, GAF is 54 okay so uh, 54 plus 36 plus 90 equals 180 right there okay you're going to be using that to find the area of regular polygons the area of regular polygons and there's a fancy proof to this and I think I can prove it to you but but this is the springtime and you guys are getting a little um, uh, the deer in the headlights look on me. It's a little spring fever, and I, I don't want to prove it to you. I'll lose you, and that's that's not the important part of this lesson. It's, here's the formula right here. So the area of a regular polygon with n sides, so n gone, whether it's five sides, pentagon, six sides, hexagons, uh, heptagons for seven, eight eightagons, which is uh, octagon, and, and so forth. But n sides that have a side length s okay and a potham a and the perimeter uh, p uh, our formula is uh, the area is one half uh, the apothem times the perimeter and the reason why it's one half the apothem times the perimeter is check out this little right triangle right here this little right triangle is one half base times height okay so this is half of the side length right there so and then this is the apothem right there so what you do is you take half of the apothem times the perimeter or you can do half of the apothem times uh, how many sides there are times the side length okay I like this one better this one's just a little easier to explain for me anyway so here we go we have a regular nonagon that's inscribed in the circle that has radius 4 Four units okay find the perimeter and the area okay so I did find the perimeter I forgot to uh, label that though so I just remembered that right now okay so here's our formula right there area equals one half the apothem times the perimeter okay so what we need to do is figure out this length right here and then this length right here if we can figure out kj right there then we multiply it times nine to get the perimeter and if we can figure out ln that's our that's our apothem right there so it's going to be one half the apothem times the perimeter okay so all, the only thing we know is nine sides and we know that the radius is four so let's find this central angle right there. The central angle is 360 uh, divided by four, about divided by nine, a nonagon. Okay, so it's 40. So angle KLJ is 40. Well, let's deal with this little angle right here. Since uh, the apothem bisects that central angle, then this little dude is 20 right here, and I I copied this little guy right here. So now we can use okay. So X is going to be our apothem right here, and Y is going to be half of the whole side length right there and we can use Sakatoa to find X and Y okay so the sine of 20 is opposite over hypotenuse the sine is opposite over hypotenuse the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse okay so here's the right angle right here so 4 is that hypotenuse Here's the right angle, 4 is the hypotenuse. So if we do adjacent over hypotenuse, that's going to give us x over 4. Okay, so I'll just um, uh, make sure your calculator is in degrees mode, not radians or gradients. And so the sine of 20 degrees is 0.342. The cosine of 20 degrees is po uh, 0.940. Okay, equals um, opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. Now we cross multiply. So when we cross multiply, we find out y. Now remember, y is only half the length right there. We need to find the whole length right there. So I'm going to double it right there. But we do know the apothem. The apothem is 3.76. Okay. All right. So so there's the whole side length right there. That is S right there. And A is that 3.76. So here's our area formula. Okay. So the area is um, uh, A, uh, one half A times uh, P. Okay. And so the perimeter is 24.624 and units. Okay. So it did say find the perimeter. So I didn't label that so the perimeter is 24.642 or 624 units and then the area we just plug that in right there and so when we get that uh, we get uh, 46.3 square units all right all right okay guys if you are in my class that's going to be your assignment take care